Hi, um, I want to do an example of matching polar equations to uh, graphs uh, over here. We have uh, four different e equations and four different graphs. Um, now to do this, you, you do not have to be a, an expert at, at graphing these. Um, just just uh, get a rough idea of what the graph looks like so you can match them up. So let's just start with the first one here. I've got r equals theta sine theta. All right, so I have these over here. I've got theta sine theta. Now, um, just like in ordinary graphing of rectangular coordinates, um, if you don't know uh, what your uh, graph will look like, just make a table um, and just randomly pick some values of theta, some angles. Um, typically, you can pick things like like zero, pi over two, pi over pi. Um, and usually after just three or four points, uh, angles, you, you have three or four points and you have a pretty general idea of, uh, of the trends. And that's, that's usually good enough. So let's just start with zero. Um, when theta is zero, I've got sine of zero is zero, uh, times anything is, is zero. Um, and so let's graph that point. Um, if, if you'd like to give yourself a little value, a little, circles for radiuses that would be that would be like a, a radius one radius two you 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 can do that or just kind of imagine where the where those would go you can give yourself some like uh, some angles like the pi over four pi is up there this is zero if you want to you can do that um so anyway at zero zero means angle is zero and radius is zero anytime radius is zero that means you've just got a point right in the middle right there Okay, now uh, let's take a look at our matching. So far, um, I can rule out B because there's no point in the middle. So this equation, it cannot be B, but it, but A has a point in the middle. So it is C, so it is D. So at least I've got it narrowed down to three possibilities. Um, let's take a look at some more points. So pi over two. So sine of pi over two equals one, and then one times the, uh, this other theta would be pi over 2. So pi over 2, for graphing purposes, for a really rough estimate, you can just round pi t to 3. And 3 divided by 2 is about 1.5. So it, it's actually about 1.57, but it, it's okay for graphing purposes. So that tells you when uh, your angle is pi over 2, your radius is 1.5, which is about there. Okay, now he here's how to think about polar coordinates. Imagine um, a wheel and, and and the wheel is spinning in a counterclockwise direction. Your wheel starts it, it um, and, and imagine you have like a point on the wheel and, and that point starts at uh, zero radians and then, um, let me let me use another color here, and then that wheel is rotating and as, as that wheel rotates around, the R is getting shorter or getting longer depending on the equation right there so in this case as i'm spinning along this wheel my radius starts at zero but then as you can see as the as your angle grows you're taking sine of theta so you're getting bigger and bigger numbers and so this radius let's go back to purple here so that radius is growing uh, until you get to a radius of 1.5 after pi over two radians Okay, and then after that, um, actually, let, let's let's pick one more intermediate point here before we do pi. Let's do like uh, like three pi over four. So what's happening now is, if you want to use that sine wave for reference, right there, um, the your maximum is at pi over two, and now you got three pi over four, which is about there. So pi is decrease. Excuse me, sine of your angles are decreasing, but the angle is still increasing. Um, so they're kind of balancing each other out. Um, but let, so I, I'm not gonna actually compute it, but I can see it's gonna be probably one point something. Um, now, when theta is pi, I'm back to zero again, because theta sine of pi is zero, and anything times zero is zero. And so um, Imagine now you're rotating along this wheel again. Your wheel is spinning in a counterclockwise direction. As the angle goes from pi over 2 down to pi, my radius is um, changing, but it's heading back to zero again. So it'll look kind of like, oops, 
go back to purple here, it'll look kind of like that right there. Okay, so there there's one one loop and and uh, you can you can see because sine is periodic that basic pattern will just continue. It 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 might go um and uh you know down below for certain values of theta it might get bigger but i'm gonna have that that loop and so now let's go back to our multiple choice here um it definitely is not c c c has loops but they're at, at different angles um i don't see that happening um d kind of has that loop there um so does a so i've got it narrowed down to, to two possibilities all right now you can also do some um, well, let, let, let's take a look at some negative values. What about 3 pi over 2? Okay, so sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Um, and then negative 1 times theta is negative uh, 3 pi over 2. Okay, so when, when you have a negative radius, first of all, if, if you round pi to a 3, I've got 3 times 3 is 9, 9 halves. So it's roughly negative 4.5. Okay, now my my radius is getting bigger, but it's negative. So three pi over two. Uh, pi. So so imagine that wheel now. I'm rotating down to three pi over two radians. Um, normally my radius would be down here, someplace in in, in this region. However, since I've got a negative, it, it goes backwards. So so a negative four point five would be this way. Let me just use my red there so neg negative 4.5 is out there someplace so so here's what's going on um my loop is going to loop around again except bigger this time it's going to go up to um uh, three pi over two is down here so so actually i, I pointed in the wrong direction should be up here so here here is the opposite of three pi over two up there so it's going to loop around uh to negative oops to negative 4.5 right there um, and then the, you can see it'll loop around. It'll go back to zero again, right there. So I've got two loops. Um, so now, now it, it has to be A because I've got a loop within a loop. Um, it, D looks different. So A is my option right there. All right, now uh, on this graph, well, what, where are these bottom loops coming from? Um, well, those are coming from negative values of theta. For example, if you had... Um, say negative pi over two then you'd have a uh, sine of negative pi over two is um is negative one times negative pi over two is negative times negative is positive so it's positive pi over two um so it's a positive radius meaning going forward but your angle is negative pi over two so that that would give you um a point right there and so you have a loop down this way for those negative angles and and then uh you would get a bigger loop and by the way the angles would keep going if, if theta was like 17 pi over 2 or something your radius would be really really large and so you're going to get loops within loops within loops but on on the matching uh questions they, they only did uh just uh, a, a, a few periods of, of theta Okay, let's go on to the next one. Five divided by square root theta. All right, what does that look like? Uh, let, let me erase all this first. Okay, so five, five divided by square root theta is right there. So the, the, the basic thing with this is as theta gets bigger, r gets smaller because you're dividing by theta. So let's just do a couple... Um, if theta equals zero radians, r is undefined because five divided by square root zero is uh, undefined. Um, so what happens? It's it's kind of like a, a vertical asymptote in a way, except you don't really see vertical asymptotes much. Um, but like vertical asymptotes, you want to know what's happening close to zero. So let's do like 0.01. So five divided by square root 0.01. Okay, well, that, that's some big number. I don't have to worry about actually computing it, but, um, well, actually, 5 divided, square root of 0 0.01 would be 0 0.1, so it's it would be um, 50, all right? But So you can see it's it's a big number. 
Um, I don't really care about the exact value of it. I just know it's big. Um, now, on the other hand, as theta gets... Okay, so that's a, so actually that was the flip side. As theta gets smaller, R gets bigger. Now, as theta gets bigger, R gets smaller. So if, if theta is like, um, say, uh, pi, I've got 5 divided by square root of pi, which is whatever it is, but it's uh, it's what? 5 divided by, I don't know, 2 point something or 1 point something. So it, it's getting smaller. And if, if you have like 2 pi, it gets even smaller and so on and so on. So the graph will look like this. It, it's going to start way, way out there towards infinity and it will spiral around um, like this. And then as your theta, the more times you rotate around, the smaller and smaller and smaller that angle gets. And then um, you never get to zero though. So you could put a hole in the middle to indicate it never actually gets to zero. So that spiral is um, option B. Okay. Um, next one, five times sine theta over two. All right, so let's take a look at that one. Okay, so um, let's start with zero again. When theta is zero, I've got sine of zero uh, is zero. So, so, I, so I've got the point in the middle there, zero, zero again. All right, let's do like, um, well, normally my next angle would be pi over two, but I'm already dividing by two, so let, let's do pi right there. So now when theta is pi, um, pi over two is, sine of pi over two is one, so I've, I'll have five right there. So, so what's going on between zero and pi? So as that wheel is rotating counterclockwise, uh, pi radians, that radius it is, is getting bigger. So kind of like this, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger um, until it gets out to five right there. So so now it, it's a little weird. I mean, you're used to thinking, oh, that's negative five, but actually it's a, you're, you're, you rotated pi radians and then you move forward uh, five units. So, so that is the point pi and five right there. Okay, so, um, so actually I, I could stop right there because that that that's not c that's d we've got zero and then it rotates until you get down to negative five so so you you can see because of the way sine works that loop will just continue around so um uh it's d all right and then last one one plus three cosine three theta well that has to be c because it's the only one left but let's let's think about this one for a minute so first of all, you have <clears throat> three theta inside. So anytime you have three theta, that means um, uh, everything happens three times as fast. And so it's uh, instead of, of one loop, you're going to get three loops in, in, in one cycle, so to speak. And so that, that explains the three loops right there. Um, but uh, let, let, me clear, let me strategically choose a zero and pi over six for this. All right. And, and you'll see why I picked pi over six in a moment. So... If, if, if theta is zero, I've got three times zero is zero. Cosine zero is one times three is three plus one is four. Okay, now pi over six, uh, three times pi over six is pi over two. And then cosine pi over two is zero. So that, that brings you to uh, to one right there. So when you plot these two points, we've got zero, four, I'm starting out there at four. And then you go just pi over six units and it's, 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 it's already gone down to to one right there. Now that that little formula two pi over over b for calculating period also works with these. So it's two pi over three. And so what that tells you is as that wheel rotates, uh, pi two pi over three radians already you've done one full cycle. So it'll look kind of it, it it'll cycle cycle around uh, once and then um and then what, once you've done one cycle then the next two pi over three, you'll get another. You'll get another loop, and then the last two, uh, two pi over three is another loop, and so that that explains why um, it has to be uh, C right there. All right, so I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna just uh, stop stop there. Uh, thank you for watching.